Father, I just praise you and thank you for today. Thank you, Father God. As the rain's falling, the rain's falling the earth, we're growing big things for us, Father God. We can't ignore your greatness and how trivial mankind is on this earth, but how much you love us. Father God, I just thank you that you help me to stay focused and uh, impart to these people here today, Lord God, your great love. That you so loved us that you were willing to send your son. And that son dying for us made a way to clear the way for us to get out of the sin nature and to eventually come to your presence. And as the song said, Father God, there's thousands of ways and blessings that we need to uh, adhere to you. The things that these young folks just have never even seen and are yet to be seen. Father God, that you're going to show them great and mighty things because that's the kind of God you are. You're a great and mighty God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right. Take, uh, everybody take a paper. Uh, it's in front of you there. You're going to need it. <laughs> I got a little math-mindedly carried away. Yeah. But, but you're not doing math. I already did it for you. I was, uh, Christian was back there with me, and I was telling him some of the slides that we need to show. Okay, everybody don't complain now. I'm not quizzing y'all. There's one blank, and it's only because there's more than one reason it needs to be put there. Everybody, listen to me read the title of this paper. It says, Jesus made you and you are his. Amen. Last week, if you were in chapel, Pastor Bill showed a zygote, which is a union, in a mother's womb, and it grew into a baby. And it was like, awesome. <laughs> I've had eight of those little babies, and they are awesome individuals now. They're bigger than you are. Patience. You want to be my helper? Yes, yes. Don't talk. <laughs> Listen to me. I want, I want you to be involved. And, and this is what you are. You're a product of something wonderfully made. And the, the thing we need to take a hold of was you are not a mistake. God didn't intend on making mistakes when he called mankind in the very beginning good. He called, us, he called his invention, his creation, good. All right? Very good. As a matter of fact, it was very, very good. All right, so I'll put a triple grade in there. Uh, whenever you see twice in the Bible... Okay, I got you, Lord. All right. When you see twice in the Bible the word repeated, very, very good. That, I mean, that's like super, super good. And that's what he thinks about you and I. Now, I want to show you how insignificant in human terms you are. And that's what that paper's about. But before I do, I want to share a dream. And, uh, yes, ma'am. Stay put. <laughs> I'm a walker. I'm sorry. Okay. I want to share a dream with you. Think of yourself as being above a platform, and the platform looks like a stage, and the stage, this white stage, and from behind a curtain, 12, I'm going to call them entity, entities, these big 12, 14 foot big things, they look like a human, okay, humanoids, and they came out and they took a knee, they took a knee like this, and then they bowed their heads. Now, on their body, they carried weapons, all right? All sorts of weapons. But they didn't have any drawn weapons, no guns or anything like that. More like a sorty kind of thing. And so anyway, so there's 12 of them. And they come out, and they take four rows, three deep. And on the stage by the, the second one on the left-hand side, I see a, a demonic name. And I realized that these are 12 demonic entities all right in other words like fallen angels and I'm, I'm looking at them and i know that they're big but they're taking a knee and they drop their head and they're not saying a word they're not flinching a muscle in their bodies and from over here i hear these people shouting names this is a dream i had just last week and in the names the people were getting all excited, but I didn't know their name. I didn't know the name they were calling, but they were shouting these, this, these names out, 
and one right after the other like that. And as soon as I heard a name, I heard another one. I couldn't repeat any of it because I don't speak all those kind of type of languages. You know, there's hundreds of languages in the world. But the last one, I, I recognized the name was the name of God. And when I recognized it, excitement came up inside of me. And I went, I'm a child of God. And all the people were just cheering and shouting. And immediately, the slate in my mind was wiped clean. And I started to dream all over. I saw all these 12 entities come out, take a knee, bow, bow their heads. And the whole time, this whole thing is going over again. These people are shouting these names. These guys, I look back. I remember the second dream. The second time, I saw the same dream. And these things didn't move. Like they could have rebelled, but they couldn't. They couldn't move. And when I woke up, I remember I sat up and I went, oh yeah, that was important. Because I saw that same dream twice. And I've never seen anything like this before. And I thought, all right, what are you, what are you telling me, Lord? He said, these names were the names of, of God in foreign languages. That's why I didn't recognize them. But you knew the last one. Now, I can't tell you what it was, but my spirit man knew the last one. Because, I mean, look, uh, there's a paper back there that's about that long. And it's got all the names of God. I mean, like Jehovah, okay, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sid, Kenu, there's a whole bunch of them. And uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, those, those names, okay. I, but there was one that I heard, and I recognized it, but I can't tell you right now in the human, but in the spirit, I knew the name. Because my spirit recognized it, and I got excited. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, these demons are bowing to the name of God in the language of the people. I went, whoa, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. These dudes aren't even confessing. They're just stopping. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And that was the most powerful dream I've had in a long time. Okay? And I just want to help you all understand what Pastor Bill did last week was just a nugget in your, in your treasure box. And your treasure box is as big as this room. And God wants to give you nuggets to put in there. Nuggets of gold worth more than fine gold. And that's the word of God. And the song where it says, I am a friend of God. How many of y'all have had, now I have recently, y'all kind of, some of y'all know me, that I had my father pass. And he was pretty close to me. But the one who passed that really broke my heart was my great-grandfather when I was probably y'all's age. It broke my heart so bad. I had my Bible. Uh, there was a traditional thing. I'd open my Bible. I shut my Bible and I turned my back on God. And I was only like about 12, 13. I didn't want to hear the name of God. I was mad at God. He took my, grand, my great-grandfather away. And I was mad, okay? And in the process of being mad, he just let me go through my life. Seven years later, eight years later, my friend at college was telling me about God. And so, tap, 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 tap. Is this getting woke up? Yeah, it's kind of. My aunt, at, uh, on my little trip that I took, I've told you all about fishing and my the little uh, canoe partner telling me about God. They all tell me. Well, it started sinking in that there was something about this God. And there was something about God that I didn't even know. Because I really didn't, I didn't read his word. I didn't want his word. Okay? And I was mad. Mad at him. Years later, after I got saved, 20, years later in a service on a Wednesday night, the pastor had us go back in our memories to the point where we were mad at God or disloyal to God or something and deal with it. And God had me go back to the point where my great-grandfather died. Look, a kid, hope deferred makes the heart sad, and that is so true. I knew in two weeks I was going to go spend the whole summer with my great-grandfather. And it, he was just so full of information and stories and he didn't do anything fantastic. Usually we sat out at the woodshed and the, the coal mine, coal, coal mine, coal shed where they store the coal, crack black walnuts, eat black walnuts, and feed them to the little guinea. I don't know why my little spirit man was tuned, but I do know now because he read the Bible to me every day. And he talked the word of God to my spirit man every day. And in his Bible it says, for Linda, because he left his Bible to me. Because there was a spirit inside of me that was hungry for what this man said. All right, so getting back to this time, 
I had a vision of my great grandfather. It was like I was looking up at a hill, like a V shape, but it was opposite. And these people were standing out on a ledge of a cliff. And this little bitty guy was dancing like this, like that. <laughs> and I was looking, and I said, that's my great grandfather. And to his left and to his right were all the people that had gone on to the other world, to the other side, <laughs> to heaven, okay? And I'm sitting here watching this thing, and I'm having a spiritual moment and a physical breakdown, crying and weeping, really realizing what killed my great grandfather was they had to amputate his leg and he got gangrene. And the gangrene went to his heart and killed him. Two weeks before I get to spend the whole summer with this man, the love of my heart. I mean, seriously, he was like the most important man next to my father, of course, but my father was in the Navy, he was always gone. This man, was my, my, the man I looked up to in my family, you know? And so, when I saw him dancing, the Lord said, he's got his leg back. And I went, whoa, it was so powerful. And he said, you know, he was ready to come be with me. He was in a lot of pain. And I said, Lord, I'm so selfish. Wow, I was a selfish kid. And I realized the deepness of that regret of losing him as a child. Y'all have gone through some pain, painful things. Not, not even half as painful as my little childhood thing. And y'all have got wounds inside of you. You need to know that God made you. You are his workmanship. You are so, so unique, so special in his eyes. And he loves you. And he's got a place prepared for us. Because this world, like that song, says, hey, when my time comes, I don't even like to talk about death. We talk about death way too much. But when we talk about it, hey, we need to know in 10,000 years, where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? You're not going to be here, okay? This old earth may not even be here. Where are you going to be? You need to be with Father God. You don't need to be in this other territory that was not prepared for mankind. It was prepared for the devil and his angels who rebelled against God after having seen the face of God. They had the audacity to think that they could rebel. Christian, our first scripture. If he gets set ready. The sheet that you have says, Salvation is in no other name but Jesus. Okay? Salvation is comes from the word saved. This scripture doesn't have anything to do with this. But saved from what? S saved from what? Anybody? Yeah. Alright, saved from sin. Here on this earth, you're saved from sin. What about eternal? Eternal sin? Separation from God. Separation from God? Okay, everybody's going to say hell. Alright, yeah, that place. Alright. But listen to the wisdom of the Proverbs. Are you ready? Who wants to read it for me? One of these sleeping heads. All right. The reverent fear of the Lord, that is worshiping Him Amen. and regarding Him as truly awesome. It's the beginning. It's the preeminent, uh, well, preeminent, preeminent part of knowledge. It's the starting point, the very essence. It's what? Recognizing the fear of God. Somebody who loves you so much. That's where your starting point is of wisdom. All right? But arrogant, a fool, despises skillful and godly wisdom and instruction and self-discipline. Hey, if you don't listen to one of your teachers, not one of your teachers do you want to receive instruction from or wisdom from, you at least need self-discipline. Okay? I need to tell myself, no. No. I've done that in a mirror. No. You're not going to get your way flesh. My spirit has got to see the hand of God in its life. There's people like my great grandfather. I counted on him. I counted on him being a godly man and he was till the day he died. I've got grandchildren. I've got y'all. I have to be counted on. I have to be there for you. As an example, we all, us adults, you, as an older student, need to be counted on. You need to be that self-disciplined example for your younger brothers and sisters, for your cousins, whoever you influence. That's important. Next scripture, Christian. Thank you. 
by the way, for him helping me here. The reverent fear of the Lord, that was uh, that was Proverbs 1, 7, and Proverbs 14, 27. The reverent fear of the Lord, that leads to obedience and worship. Okay, that's the key now. Is a fountain of life so that one may avoid the snares of death. Uh, Jasmine, you told me about a little girl that just gave up on life. Okay, friend of hers. There's nothing to give up on, y'all. Life is so worth it. Life may not be the best right now, but you can change things. Believe you me, you can change your life. You have the ability to make, with your hands, things happen in your life that your parents may not ever get to give you. Okay? You've just got to be willing to be obedient, and as you worship the Lord, He'll give you witty inventions. Everything that's in this room was an invention of a man or a woman because God gave them knowledge. They may not recognize it was God, but God gave knowledge. Everything in the world that we see, inventions don't come from our intelligence. They come from an inspiration from God. Amen. He's the creator, all right? And if you give him credit by worshiping him, you're going to go far in life. Amen. God will make a way. All right, the next scripture, I just want to always preference everything I get sidetracked on later. I won't preference it with the word. Okay, in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, this was a word that the Lord gave me a few years ago, and I took it from the Amplified Bible because, you know, when you when you get all out in the world, and you act all tough, and you guys act tough, and we girls act like we know it all, okay? Mm -hmm. That was not me. I was a know-it-all, okay? And I might appear still like that. I, don't, I apologize if I do, but the Lord humbled me. He said, therefore, humble yourself, Linda, Miss Moody, Humble myself under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride. we got to be better than the Pharisees, Jesus said. So that he, God, may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. Hey, if all I get to do is come to church and serve in the nursery and take care of little kids, those little kids could grow up to be very important people in the world. Amen. That's a service. That's that's where I might need to be right now. Cast all my cares, all my anxieties, all my worries, all my concerns, once and for all. Leave it. Leave it there. All the anxieties that you carry, all those cares and concerns. Leave it on Him. For He cares about you with deepest affection. He watches over you very carefully. Not just care, full of care, but very full of care. You got that? You are very important to God. And yet we're just, wait till you read the paper. You're just going to be amazed. All right. Christian, start our little photo off here. <laughs> All right. Go nope, the other way. See that pickup truck? Wait, go back to the beach. All right, I want you to go to the beach. Okay. Check this beach out. Who wants to count the number of grains of sand? No. <laughs> Why not? Oh, you will? Okay. I'm not paying you to do it now. You may be sitting there for years. Don't do it. Maybe a few decades. But if we scoop one cup of that sand into this, they averaged that it's about, and it's on your paper there. Oh, okay. I kind of out of order this. They average that it's about 15 million grains of sand. Okay? Now, go back to my paper. Hold on to that picture right there. All right, so what we're safe from, because God carefully cares for you. He is full of care for you. All right, if he formed you in the womb of your mother, is he not the creator of your flesh? Yeah. He breathes in you the breath of life, you become a living being. <gasps> you do that just like a... Adam did. You did it when you come on, come out of mama or when the doctor pops you. <laughs> there are over 724 trillion cells in your body. Okay, we've got a picture of a cell here, Christian. All right, that's the number printed out. See it? 724. And then four sets of three zeros. That's too, too, too big for me to count. That's a, uh, that's a cell, all right? And I want y'all to appreciate this because we, 
We've heard all this stuff about a, a vaccine. We've heard all this stuff about this virus. That is a human cell. Let me go over there for a second. All right, picture this. You're the Earth, right? And you're revolving. Here looks like a sun, right? And then all these things are revolving inside your cell. That little thing called a nucleolus holds the RNA that makes you who you are. Inside of it, the messenger RNA is the most important thing in your body that tells that cell how to make that thing look like another cell. It creates another cell and another cell. And you grow a little bitty heart, it goes into a big old heart. Your brain goes big. Everything inside of your body is the same kind of muscular cells, skeletal cells, all those different cells. It's all tied up in the wisdom and knowledge that God put inside that little bitty thing called a nucleus. But it's got to, this thing's got a living, breathing apparatus around it called a human cell. And it's got to have all these other big words, and you'll learn about that in biology, but all this other stuff makes this cell happen. Now, think of this. How big are you? 160 pounds. How many cells are in this body? I just told you. 724 trillion. Now, what does that mean? Make every one of your cells a grain of sand. All right? So in here, I only have 15 million cells of your body. Right there. But you're so much bigger. Oh, yeah. You're big compared to that. All right, but a grain of sand? Oh, a grain of sand is this room big compared to one of your cells. Sand is huge compared to your cells, okay? So now I'm going to tell you how big you really are. And I'm not calling you fat, okay? All right, so if you count the grains of sand, 15 million, and each grain of sand represents a cell, which I just said, it would take 48,266,267 million cups of sand to make you. Anybody want to scoop this for 48 million times? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm still not paying you, bro. You can do it. All right now, I'm going to bring it back to home. I said a pickup truck. So Christian and I were doing all this research. A pickup truck holds about 4,200 4, cups. I can dip this. Now that you can do. 1,000. Two, five hours later, 10 hours later, maybe three days later, 4,200 cups of sand right there in that pickup truck. Show me a pickup truck. You know how many pickup trucks of sand your body represents? One, one comma, four, nine, two. Eleven and a half thousand trucks of sand. Now that's if I take you and blow you up really big. Honey, I blew up the kids. All right. Do you understand how big you really are? If we just scale down, y'all kind of comprehending this? If you take your cell compared to a grain of sand, you're 11 and a half pickup trucks big in sand alone. But you're not, are you? But yet, that picture of that cell I showed you, if anything goes wrong with that cell, that's so microscopic, if anything goes wrong in that cell, it dies. Mm -hmm. And if a bunch of them die, you can get a disease. And then when a bunch of them are diseased in an in a organ, you can die from that physically. So do you understand how important it is to worship your creator? Mm -hmm. Go there. Go there with me then. Okay? Think. Man, God, you got my whole... We say this every day. And care for my body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's important, isn't it, y'all? Mm -hmm. Y'all are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by a God that looks at our teeny, tiny, selfless, nothing. We're, we're, we're lack of self in this universe. Let me go there one more, one more big example. There are more cells in your human body if I gave every star in the Milky Way one of your cells. You know how many stars there are in the Milky Way? I wrote it right there. Over a hundred billion. Okay? There's a lot of stars in just our Milky Way. Beyond us, 
There are, uh, what did I write again? 105 billion human people born on the earth. That's a person per star. <laughs> Everybody, y'all got a star. <laughs> Maybe not named after you, like Alpha <laughs> Centauri and Big Dog and all those things. But every one of those stars that we can see in our universe. Now, another thing I was telling the students, what was it? How many 10,000 miles were we traveling? We figured it out from a math problem. It's something like we're spinning around the Earth. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. The Earth is spinning around the sun at like 17,000 miles an hour. The Earth, with, the, with the, the solar system of the sun, is flying through space about 10,000 miles forward. That's, that's facts. We're traveling fast through a vacuum of space. And now compare yourself to Earth. We're tiny, aren't we? We're little. The mighty ocean could swallow all of, us, all of us up. And that's what I cried out on that chair that day I gave my life to the Lord, that you are a mighty ocean, and I don't want to drown. I need you. And y'all, we need the presence of God. Jesus loves his creation, mankind. He loves you. He loves me. And he wants to let us know the vastness of his big self how important it is for us to understand how he carefully cares for you. Taylor. Hey, Taylor. <laughs> okay. There are about 7.8 billion human beings on the earth today. And we are one of those important people. God cares for each one of these people as much as he cares for his best of bestest. I don't care how, how bad you act, how good you act. God still loves you. He loves you to the point where he still considers that he keeps his eye. Here we go, Taylor. He keeps his eye on you. He's watching over you. Not to slap your hand, but maybe to slap your hand from getting burnt. Not to condemn you, but to keep you from getting killed or hurt. He's that kind of God. He's constantly looking after you, all right? Um, the song, I am a friend of God. Who am I? Who am I, Father God, that you're mindful of me? Who am I? I'm just a bag of cells, a dust bag, right? He is thinking of me. He's thinking, wow, how I love you. He's thinking about that. He's saying to himself, Nerlin, oh, I love you. Like my great grandfather meant so much to me, okay? And in my latter life, my father. People who I look forward to seeing someday. My mother, okay? These people in your life are important. All right, I'm getting some sleepy heads in here. It's amazing. It's amazing that God did this. Christian, what else do I have? That's about it. That's it? That was it? Okay, good. All right. You think it'll come up and play? I'll try. All right, he's going to try to see. Uh, if he doesn't download this thing from the internet, it keeps blinking bleak, off. So uh, Skit Guys has a wonderful one that Pastor Bill showed us in church. I want you to just understand, these numbers are big. They're fantastically big. When we go down to the smallest cell, when we go out into the universe of the largest star, our cells or our sun compared to the largest stars. <laughs> they swallow our sun up. And our sun would consume us if we were just a few thousand, I think it's thousands or half a million or something miles closer, it would burn us up. Everything's so perfectly created in the universe. That's why if you go along with God's word and do what he said, yeah, go ahead and pl play it, if it will. You turn it up? Ephesians 2.10 says, you're God's workmanship, his masterpiece. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I don't really see a, a masterpiece, you know? I mean, maybe a Picasso. It's like, fuck. <laughs> but I want to be his masterpiece. I want to be everything he created me to be. And so I go to him in prayer, and I say, Dear Heavenly Father, do whatever it takes to mold me into the image of your son. Make me your masterpiece.
Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi. Whoa. Who are you? I'm God. You said the prayer, so here I am. You're not God. No, I am. You said the prayer. That's how it works. Okay, okay. If you're God, then uh, make it snow in here. You know what? I really don't want to make it snow in here because it'd get kind of yucky. Yeah, you're not God. Why do you say that? God wouldn't say yucky. I do. It's a Greek word. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, if you're God, what does Lamentations 15.9 say? Lamentations is only five chapters. It's a very short book. Oh. Why was it so short? I was tired of lamenting. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> if you're God, who's going to win the World Series this year? I'm really not into playing games. Why are you so much into playing games? You are God. Well, gave it away. You answered my question with a question. I did? <sighs> yeah, I do that. Don't I? I did it again. <laughs> Step right up. Here we go. Okay. All right. Hey, what are we doing? I'm going to make it my original masterpiece. This is the process. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Wait, wait. What are these about? These are the tools I'm going to use to make you into my original masterpiece. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. I thought you were a carpenter. That's my son. Step right up. Here we go. Okay. Oh, hey, God. How do you know what to chisel away and what to leave? I take out everything in your life that doesn't belong there, kind of like dead weight. Ooh, speaking of dead weight, could you chisel right here? It showed up when I was in my 20s grew around and became back fat. I don't even know why you created that, but I can't get rid of it. I mean, I've tried everything. Like, I tried running, I tried lifting weights. My wife actually talked me into trying Pilates. That was awkward, but I can't get rid of it. So if you would just chisel around here, and then, you know what, if you chisel a line right here, and maybe four, to five, maybe eight lines right here, that would be awesome. You're funny. You made me that way. I also made the platypus. The platypus. All I'm saying is most of my children, when it comes to this process, they just want to talk, but they don't want to do the work. So do you want to talk or can I chisel? Talk, chisel. No, 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 no. no. I choose to chisel. All right. Through my Holy Spirit, I'm going to bring up things in your life that I want you to work on. Like your anger. I created the emotion, but you use it in the wrong way. Um, you compare yourself to others instead of me. You tell little white lies because you want to people please. You're lazy. But you try to fool everybody by looking really, really busy. You have a problem with lust? Time out. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with lust. You don't have a problem with lust. No, I can do it anytime I want. <sighs> Hang on a second. I mean, I, I gotta admit, I, I feel like you've been doing some great work, and I'm looking pretty good right now. All right, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? I see me. Okay, then I need to keep chiseling away because ultimately, you and other people need to see my son. Okay, don't misunderstand me. It's just um, when I look more like Jesus, people get uncomfortable around me. I mean, even my church friends, and they're like, "Oh, you're holier than thou," you know. And I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to make people uncomfortable. So what you're saying is you'd rather play God in certain areas of your life than for me to be God over your whole life. That is not what I said. It's what you meant. Yes, it is. Um, it's hard to talk to you. You know everything that I'm thinking. I'm just saying you've done some great work. Maybe we take a break, a sabbatical from each other, you know. I'll stay right here, and then, you That's know. That's just it. You never just stay right there. You're either moving toward me or away from me, but never you just stay. What you're doing is called control. Do you want to control things in your life, or can I chisel? Control, chisel, control, No, chisel, chisel. chisel. All right. But can we chisel where I want? That's called control. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Now this right here, this secret sin that you keep running to whenever you're hurting, angry, lonely, tired, that you think you're fooling everybody, but it's making you a whitewashed tomb. Are you ready for me to chisel this out of your life? Yeah. See, it's a process. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's your whole life. And you care so deeply about what other people think of you. It's rubbish. It's garbage. The greatest thing you're ever going to hear is at the end of your life, when you hear me say, well done, good and faithful servant, that's what you keep your eye on. That's the prize. Heavenward. Oh, it hurts. Oh, trust me. This hurts me more than it hurts you. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. I just, I don't think you understand this pain. Pardon me? You're asking me to sacrifice a lot, God. No. Talk to me about sacrifice. I know all about sacrifice. I sent my son to die on the cross for pain, for sin, but I also did it for another reason, to give you freedom. 
You know what insanity is? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. And there are things that you've been doing for years, these empty wells that don't have anything to offer. You've been going to them, and it's insane. Allow me to chisel them out of your life. Allow me to produce character when you keep focusing so much on your image. Okay, but I was thinking. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Okay, but if we went another way. Your ways are not my oh, ways. Oh, I can't. You can't what? I, 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 I can't be good. That's your excuse. That's your excuse is that you can't be good. It's not an excuse. I can't. Oh, my child. In the beginning, I said it was good. I made you good. Be good. Yeah. But you and I both. What? No, what is it? Nothing, okay? You wouldn't understand. I, God of all the universe, wouldn't understand something one of my children has to say. Try me. It's just, uh, I let you down so many times, God. No, my child. You were never holding me up. I Amen. hold you up with my victorious, righteous right hand. Never the other way around. In this relationship, I hold you up. Okay? Just away. Just, just be prepared for what you're going to find in there. Because I know who's inside there. Because I get up every morning and I look at him in the mirror and I hate who I see. Because deep inside there, there's this, this little kid who gets up every morning and dresses like an adult. And I go out and I, I try to do what I'm supposed to do, but I can't, okay? I can't be who everybody else expects me to be. God, I can't even be who I want to be, much less who you created me to be. And so inside is this scared, stupid little kid. But you chisel away. Just be prepared. You have listened to so many voices for far too long that were not for me. And you have totally bought into the lie, haven't you? You think you're junk, don't you? When you lay your head down at night after you've done the dance to get the hug, you think you're junk. Listen to me. I don't take time to make junk. How can I show you that my love for you stretches as far as the east to the west? That How can I show you that my love for you has no end? I know. Reach in back pocket. What? Reach in back pocket. Why? Are you arguing with me? Reach in back pocket. Oh, God. Yes? I just went, God, I'll do that right now. You're just saying my name in vain. Come on. It's, it's a name. It's a saying. It's a name above all names. It's more than a saying. It's more than a name. I want to teach you something about my name. Reach in your back pocket. Oh, my God. Shh. <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a note. I, I wrote it when I was in college. How did you get this? Hello? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and read it. I love Angie. Other side. Sorry. <laughs> Dear God, did I hear you right today? Did I hear you say that you love me? Even though you and I both know I messed up so many times. Did I hear you say you want to use me? And I feel so useless. If you'll take me, then use me. Then. God, I give you all that I am. Take me. I love you, God. I love you too. And I love you too much just to leave you where you're at. This salvation that you hold, I don't want it to be some sentimental bush or some head knowledge. I want you to work it out in every detail of your life. And when problems come and chaos happens, don't look at it as a, as a prison, but look at it as a father disciplines his child. A father disciplines the ones he loves. I know, but it's going to be tough. Yes, but you bought into life thinking everything was going to be easy when you gave everything over to me. There will be trouble in this world. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. 
want you to do something. I want you to look out there and I want you to say, Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Tommy is God's. No, not the way you see yourself or you try so desperately for others to see you. But maybe for the first time in your life, the way I see you, the way I created you. Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Yes, you are. So are you. God doesn't make junk. You are an original masterpiece. Maybe we need to leave some of those seven trillion cells somewhere. But he's talking about spiritually chipping away at us. I want to lead y'all in a prayer. If you've accepted the Lord, then you can call Jesus' his daddy, father. So let's start off with father. I would like everybody in here to say this. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. To you a masterpiece. A Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To see myself. To see myself. Not as the voices. Not as the voices. Of this world talk. Of this world talk. But only in your word. Where you say, where you say that, you made me, that you made me, and you created me, and you created me fearfully, fearfully, and wonderfully, and wonderfully. I'm made in your image. I'm made in your image. Help me, help me, Father God, Father God, to see myself, to see myself as you see me, as you see me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all have said that over and over. You go to church over and over. Abby, Nathaniel, listen, y'all go to church and you say these things, but it hasn't hit here. We talk about hearts. Look, a little my heart socks. Valentine's Day is a day that we recognize the goodness and love of humans to other humans. And there's a history in it, but we also recognize the fact that God's heart, it was broken so that he could put you inside it. That's a new revelation for me. God's heart broke so he could put you inside it. And you know what he told me once? He said, if your heart's not broken, I can't get inside your heart. A broken heart and a contrite spirit he will not despise. Let God be God this week in your life. This weekend, I know we have a long weekend. We don't come back to Tuesday morning. Spend some time every day. When you wake up, you're laying there, hopefully in a peaceful situation, not being woke up like we do some of y'all around here. But in that peaceful situation, just reach up and, and let God love you. Let God love on you. Like, like when we see little babies and we kiss all over them. Okay. Let God love you. Let him kiss you. With the kiss of his kiss, he, he loves you. Okay. And when you start experiencing that and feeling that love from Father God, everything's going to be all right. The worst of the worst that's happened to human beings, there's been stories told that they said, well, where were you, God, when that was happening to me in my life? And I said, I was there. And that's why you're here now, because I protected you. Okay? So all those wounds, let them go. Let all those childhood hurts, 
as a 65 year old adult, I have to let them go. But I know that God loves me and I want to stay broken so that he can fill me. I don't want, I want to be a, a vessel that will hold him, but I want to have a heart that yearns for God. And that's what, that's what I'm coming to the point of just saying how much God loves you. Just the way you are. With all your quirks, we love y'all too. You wouldn't be who you are without all those funny little ways about yourselves. The ones that irritate us as well as the ones who make us joyful. You are an image of God being formed every day. You're young. You've got a lot of changes going on. But let it happen. But do it with God holding your hand. Amen. Okay? Because God loves you that much. He's going to take care of you. If you ever, ever get to the point where your voices in your head are telling you to check out, then you get in touch with somebody who loves you like one of us or one of your classmates who has been there for you, holding your hand, being a friend, okay? Don't ever listen to those voices. Only listen to God's Word. That's why we encourage you to read it. I read it out loud to myself because I need to hear it. This brain needs to hear and be humbled by the fearful, wonderful God that sustains me and keeps me. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Well, you too. This went a lot further than what I thought, but I'm still letting you out of the room. Okay. All right. Amen. Any adults, Pastor? Anything y'all want to? Okay. Thank y'all for being here. We we love Miss Young. Thank you for being here with us today. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing your grandmother. All right. All right.